right, let's do another one. Remember my steps. Step one, draw the molecule fully protonated. Arginine's kind of a weirdo. We have to protonate this group over here that has two amines coming off of this carbon. One of them has a double bond. We leave, of course, our NH3 plus is protonated and our OH is protonated as well. Step two, write down the pKa for each applicable group. What are those pKa's for this molecule? They are these. Step three, if you have more than two pKa's, and we do in this case, then find the two that have the same charge. I'm going to pause here for a minute and look at that. I have an OH, no charge. I've got an H2 plus and an H3 plus. They both have a plus one charge. These are the two groups that have the same charge. Then I calculate the average of those two groups' pKa values, which is this, 9.04 plus 12.48 divided by 2, 10.76. Step four is remember what that means. What that means is that arginine at pH 10.76 will exist in a state that has a net zero charge. Below that pH, we start to protonate stuff, including this OH, so we see our molecule become more and more positively charged. Above that pH, we start to deprotonate, and it starts to have an increasingly negative charge. And for the sake of being thorough, let's do one more example. Remember my steps. Step one, draw the molecule fully protonated. In this case, we're talking about our third example from the previous question, which is aspartate. Aspartate has a two OHs, and each three plus. We leave them all protonated. Step two, write down the pKa for each applicable group. What are those pKa values? Here they are. Step three, if you have more than two pKa values, and we do in this case, then find the two that have the same charge as each other. So I've got these two neutral OHs, same charge as each other. This NH3 plus is the odd man out. The OHs are the ones I'm going to go with. Then all we do is calculate the average of those two pKa values. Here they are. That gives me an isoelectric point, or PI, of 2.98 for aspartate, which is also known as aspartic acid. Step four is remember what that means. It means that at pH 2.98, aspartate will have a net zero charge. Below that pH, we start to see things get more and more protonated, which means we start to protonate these OHs, and we see an increasingly positive charge. Above that pH, we start to deprotonate things. We get more and more O minuses, which means we start to see things get more and more negatively charged. And now I'll address our final concept from this PowerPoint lecture, that of electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is a technique that allows us to separate amino acids based on their PI, or isoelectric point, values. Here's how it works. We put a mixture of different amino acids in the middle of a piece of paper or a gel. We then place this paper or gel between two electrodes in a solution that's buffered to a specific pH. Now we turn on the current. Simply put, Amino acids that have isoelectric point, or PI values, that are more positive than the solution's pH will have an overall positive charge and will migrate toward the negative electrode. Amino acids with PI values that are below the solution's pH will have an overall negative charge and will migrate or feel attracted toward the positive electrode. To summarize this more simply, I've written up some crazy equations here. If PI, the isoelectric point for the amino acid in question, minus pH is positive, then the amino acid will be more positive. It will hence move toward the negative electrode, because things that are positively charged are attracted towards negatively charged stuff. The converse is also true. If PI minus pH is negative, then the amino acid will be more negative. It will then move toward the positive electrode in electrophoresis. Let's take a look at an example. Let's pretend that I subject a mixed solution of arginine, alanine, and aspartate with these individual isoelectric point values to electrophoresis at pH 5. When I'm all done, 
where do each of these amino acids end up relative to each other? Let's see if we can figure this out. We begin by doing the math. Here's arginine. What I do is I take its isoelectric point and I subtract the pH of the solution, 5. And I end up getting this number, 5.76. That is a positive number. What does that mean? It means that when you run the electrophoresis, arginine is going to move toward the negative electrode. Alanine has this pi value. I subtract 5 from it, I end up with 1.02, which is also a positive number. Now 1.02 is obviously not as large a positive number as 5.76. What does that mean? It means that alanine will also move toward the negative electrode, but not by as much as arginine. Aspartate's pi value is 2.98. I subtract 5, I get negative 2.02, which is obviously a negative number. So what does that mean? It means that aspartate will migrate or be attracted toward the positive electrode. So arginine will move toward the elect negative electrode, alanine will as well, but not as far, and aspartate will move toward the positive electrode. Now I draw a picture. If we were to actually draw a picture depicting that movement. Here's the center of our gel or of our piece of paper that we've uh, placed this mixture of amino acids on. We've got the negatively charged electrode and the positively charged electrode on either end. What we see is arginine and alanine both have uh, positive differences between their PIs and the pH of the solution. They migrate toward the negative end. Arginine, of course, by more because the difference is larger. An aspartate with a negative difference migrates toward the positive terminal. Hope that makes sense. This is the result that we would expect to see if we took this mixture and developed them in an electrophoresis test. Now, once we finish doing the electrophoresis, we have to have some way of actually seeing the individual amino acids that have been electronically dragged across our paper or gel. How do we do that? Well, we stain them using a chemical compound called ninhydrin. Now, if you want to know more about how this works, please consult section 23.5. I will not require you to understand or know the mechanism by which ninhydrin reacts with amino acids. I only want you to understand that ninhydrin stains the amino acids on our paper or gel, much like a raspberry flavored popsicle might stain your teeth, tongue, and gums. That's how we can actually see where the individual amino acids end up after we run them through electrophoresis. So now I arrive at a lecture example. I want you to predict the directions of migration toward the negative or positive electrode and the relative positions of each amino acid in the falling mixture at pH 6. Tryptophan, histidine, and arginine with their isoelectric values given. If you want, you can pause it at this stage, but of course you know that I am going to give you all the answers. So here we go. Once again, we begin by doing the math. The difference between tryptophan's isoelectric point and the pH is negative 0.11, which is a small negative number. Between histidines, 1.59, a positive number. Between arginines, 4.76, a positive number. What does that mean? It means that tryptophan will move toward the positive electrode, but just a tiny amount, because it's got this small negative number. Histidine will move toward the negative electrode. Arginine will as well, but by an even larger amount than histidine. So we would expect our gel to look something like this. Tryptophan just barely gets off the starting line. Histidine moves uh, in, going toward the positive electrode. Histidine moves a little bit toward the negative. Arginine moves more. That's it. Do I expect you to know how to do this? abso freaking -lutely. So that concludes today's lecture on isoelectric points and electrophoresis. I hope you've enjoyed it. Are you hungry? <laughs> I am. I'm going to go back to the kitchen now and get myself some food. So much food, in fact, that I will likely injure both my colon and my esophagus. So until next time, enjoy the rest of your day.